Hello, in this video, we're going to go over how to compute pro forma financial statements for an existing business. The example we're going to use is Peace Blossom. The uh, formula is included in the textbook uh, under a prior chapter on financial statements. In this video, I'm going to go over step by step how to use Excel to create pro forma statements. Remember in financial modeling that the, the, some of the basic principles, we want to make our assumptions very clear. So let's first take a look at the assumption. Here are the assumptions that are provided by the owners. First is the revenue growth assumption. Um, we are going to also look ahead in our financial in our model construction. Uh, we know that in the in uh, once we finish creating the model, we want to be able to analyze different cases. So we want to include that part of the uh, of the assumption in uh, very very clearly. So here are our uh, our base case assumptions: uh, the sales growth rate for cash sales, credit card sales, and sales to customers on credit. Next are the expense assumption. So how do the owner come up with these numbers? Again, because this is an existing, existing business, the owner have the advantage of hindsight and past history. A very good place to start in coming up with these assumptions is the historic financial statement. So let's take a quick look at that. In Table 8.3, you have the historic financial statements for Peace Blossom. Right now, they're all stated in numbers. A tool that we learned in earlier chapter is to convert this, uh, the financial statements that stated in values into percentages. We call that common size statements or standardized statements. And that is a very useful tool for us to look at what has been going on from year to year. Let's go ahead and do that. This is not part of the homework assignment, but it is a useful tool and I encourage you to practice it if you um, haven't done so or if you believe that you can use more practice. Uh, recall that for the income statement, when you create the, perform uh, the common size statement, you will be dividing everything by total revenue. So this is our denominator. So we can do that for each year. So year two, that will be the sales divided by total revenue. So you'll always be the, uh, the value in row seven will be our uh, denominator. And once you have created this, you can copy it to the entire um, financial statement. So we literally only have to create a form, one formula and then we can copy it to, uh, to the rest. So that's very, very handy. So now that we have finished our um, common size statement, we can take a look at um, the general observations. First, we'll notice that uh, cash sales is decreasing as a percentage of overall sales. So that just uh, means that cash is becoming uh, cash sales is less and less important over time, even though it's still the majority of our sales. Uh, credit card sales is increasing. Sales on customer to customers on credit is also increasing. So this reflect uh, what we have seen in our sales uh, when we analyze the sales growth from year to year. So we want to start shifting or the owner decided to start shifting their focus from cash sales to credit card sales and sales to customers on credit. And that is supported by this analysis as well. We said that uh, we also see that cost of goods sold is relatively stable around 47, 48%. Uh, labor is also relatively stable. So this, and, and so this is the, uh, this is the insight that you can get uh, by looking at the common size income statement. 
And this is where this number comes from. Uh, cost of goods sold in the in the past averaged around 47 and a half, 47.9 percent. So they assume that you going forward you'll probably be the same. They have no reason for to believe you will change significantly. So they assume you'll stay at 48 percent. Wages and salary they assume it's slightly higher. So you uh, percentage. So you may uh, again they're rounding everything up. Uh, so this will be 16 percent, and SGNA is going to be around 10 percent. For tax rate, uh, this number will probably come from the most current tax law. Uh, the assumption here is that the tax rate on taxable income, so this is not on sales, uh, is going to be around 35%. This tax rate will likely include local tax, state tax, and federal tax. So the federal tax may be 25%, uh, the local state tax may be 5 to 10%. Next is depreciation. Depreciation depends on uh, existing equipment as well as future purchases. So if you go down a little bit, you will see that uh, they expect new uh, to buy a new piece of equipment in year one for three hundred thousand dollars. So based on this estimate or this assumption uh, and this plan and the existing equipment, they forecast future ex depreciation expense to be eighty-five thousand dollars per year. Interest expense is based on their financial uh, strategy. Uh, currently, again, this is the base case, and this is the first iteration. Uh, they assume that it will be $4,500. So this is based on their current financing plan. Dividend goes to the owner. Uh, most of the time, the, the owner will look at what the business is like before they decide to, to draw a dividend. So here we said TBA, so to, is to be determined. Next, we're going to look at assumptions to create the balance sheet. Um, the way that we create this is the same as uh, income statement. Uh, the owner computed the common size uh, balance sheets for this business, and they find that um, the growth rate for current asset, again, actually, this is uh, some, uh, they assume this is going to grow at the same as the average sales. So remember that these are the growth rate for separate sales items, but the overall sales, overall sales is is going to expect, expected to grow about about 5.35 percent. So all the current asset and uh, other current liability, most of them, they expect that to grow at the uh, same as the overall sales growth rate. One big exception is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, it, uh, remember that this business plan to significantly increase their sales to customers on credit. Customers on credit means that they're creating accounts receivable. So the assumption here is that you will grow at the same rate as sales to customers on credit. So that's 15%. So we can just pick that from here. So now we have all the assumption we need. And again, this is the base case assumption. And we are ready to uh, go ahead and create the model to uh, forecast uh, future financial statements. So let's turn to the next tab. Here, uh, the current sales revenue this is information that is uh, extracted from uh, the previous financial statements so you can check the numbers this is this come from uh, their most recent income statement and based on this we're going to create the forecast for the next few years so we're going to start with sales um, we've done this before so it's equal to base years sales times one plus the growth rate is listed in the assumption area. I intentionally include, put the assumption area on a separate, ta separate tab so that um, we get we have a very clear distinction between the assumption area and the model area. So cash sales is assumed to grow at 2.5%. Um, We're going to make that an absolute reference. And credit card sales, again, we're going to increase that by the assumption for credit card sales. And the same for the last, which is sales to customers on credit. So 
So once we have created that for year one, um, the total revenue is just some of the three types of sales. Next, we're going to work on the expenses. Remember that cost of goods sold is assumed to be a percentage of sales. So we'll take revenue times uh, the cost of goods sold assumption, which is 48%. Again, we're going to make that an absolute reference. Uh, wages, again, that is based on sales. And so we have that on. 16%. Again, clearly label your assumptions. Here it says expenses as a percentage of revenue. So for all these three items, um, we're going to base on set revenue. So we take revenue times, and this time is SGNA, which is 10%. So earnings before interest and taxes and depreciation and amortization is equals to revenue minus the sum of these expenses. So you can create this formula in many ways. You can take revenue minus cost of goods sold minus wages minus SGNA, or you can take revenue minus the sum of that. You'll give you exactly the same answer, of course. The next item is depreciation. And we know that that is given as a separate assumption. So depreciation is $85,000. Again, we're going to make that an absolute reference. Earnings before interest and taxes will be EB EBITDA minus depreciation. So this is EBIT, E-B-I-T. Next, we have interest expense. Again, that was estimated separately. Interest expense is $4,500. Don't forget to make that an absolute reference. And taxable income is earnings before interest and tax minus interest. Okay. And if you encounter the same problem I have, just keep hitting the escape key. So whenever you get into trouble, just press escape until your formula goes away and then you can start it all over again. So seeing the mistakes is uh, learning how to recover from mistakes is extremely important. All right. Next, we have uh, taxable income. Taxable income is equal to taxable income. I'm sorry, taxes. Uh, tax. Taxes is taxable income times the average tax rate. So we know that it's going to be 35%. And net income is taxable income minus tax. Next, we have the statement of owner's equity. So we'll take, um, so each year, um, we'll start with the, uh, the beginning accumulated retained earnings is last year's ending accumulated earnings. So to make the modeling easy, so this is setting, setting up the model is, uh, takes a lot of forethought. So to make our modeling easier, I, I took in the ending accumulated retained earnings uh, from last year. So again, this comes from the historic financial statement. So the beginning of year one is the ending of year zero. At net income, net income is here. Last cash dividend. So right now, we're going to put in our dividend strategy is going to be empty. But we want to take that into account. So dividend is whatever we put into this strategy uh, later on. So currently is zero. And our ending is equal to beginning plus net income minus dividend. So now we have finished computing our performing income statement. And you can simply copy it from year one to year three and your financial forecast is done. And that anytime you see this, it just means that your column is too narrow and you can make it a little bit wider and you'll see all the, all the digits. We're going to end this video here. In the next video, we're going to move on to the uh, next two financial statements, which are the statement of cash flows and also the performer balance sheet.